Hello to all of you music listeners and underground enthusiasts. Do you uh, do you guys like my new shirt? My, do you guys like my shirt? I got it at the Hot Topic. I don't really know what it is, but I think it's a brand, maybe? I just liked the cool smiley face. We're back with another weekly tracks list where nothing is out of the ordinary, and uh, we have some cool songs that I listened to that I liked. Let's do it. Starting this list off, we have Dead Man Walkin' by Kennedy XOXO, and Kennedy's release of Good Morning Los Angeles was my introduction to their music, and the sharp, punchy sound of the track, paired with the insanely catchy chorus, uh, hooked me pretty much immediately. And revisiting Kennedy's music in the form of Dead Man Walkin' has definitely solidified my feelings on the hyper-intensity of their music. The track, produced by Noah Made This, explores the dichotomy between confidence and self-doubt, and how a spotlight pointed in someone's direction can alter the perception uh, of how to create art or present yourself. This perspective is delivered through the vessel of a chaotic and rattling environment of pulsing vocals and shaky 808s. The vocal mix employs the glitches and quirks that are pretty common in the genre, but underneath that processed sound, Kennedy has some pretty smooth vocal passages that are delivered with a pretty enjoyable consistency. And the panned background vocals pulse in and out, helping contribute to and build up the overwhelming energy of the track. Uh, but the chaos cuts out a bit in the middle, and the I'm getting messages line feels delivered and mixed in with an important level of clarity. I think that this song releases an explosive burst of energy, and does a pretty good job of reflecting how art, something widely viewed as an emotional outlet, can turn into the complete opposite, with rising perceived pressure to fit to a certain role, taking over the original intentions. Overall, you get the best of both worlds. Uh, it's emotionally compelling, and it's pretty fun to listen to. And then we have Aether Years with Catalyst, featuring Soroki. This song has a heavy focus on the transcendent atmosphere that it just entirely emanates. Uh, it sounds very dreamy with the bouncy synth melodies and soft white noise that floats around the background. It's got this sort of dampened sparkle showing brightness but in such a reserved way. And Aether Year's vocals reflect this intention, delivering melancholy with a soft and casual tone, singing about losing focus on goals or like a grip of feeling present. I particularly love the alchemical devotion bar. I think it really stands out in a small section of the song of interesting and intriguing imagery because this song is full of imagery, especially focusing on potion brewing. And I also really love the saltwater skies line as well. And Soroki's verse is what I believe to be a necessary addition to the relaxed vibe, bringing in a bit of playful energy to an otherwise somber song. The ha's, like, like, like laughing, like ha, like laughing, you know, you know how people laugh? They are such a great way to transition between verses because they're such a stark contrast to Aether's entire verse. And uh, between the two of them, I really enjoy the vocal melodies and the harmonies. Uh, they flow smoothly and can honestly be pretty catchy at some points as well. This is a pretty chill song. Up next, up next, up next, we got Moogie Zora. Awake featuring Earth to Athena, I was pretty excited to see this collab come out as Mugi Zora and Earth to Athena are both artists that I found through working on videos for this channel and have been following closely since my initial introduction to each of their respective discographies. So seeing them together on a song definitely had me interested, knowing Mugi Zora's dedication to soft and spacey acoustic folk and Athena's insistence on making high energy alt rock and EDM tracks. And I'm happy to say, uh, that they mesh, they mesh pretty well on this track. The entire song is supported by Mugizor's single track acoustic guitar picking, which is plucky and intentional while remaining in theme with the low, soft atmosphere of the track. And Mugizora and Athena both have different mixes that I think blend together really well in their differences, because Mugi's verse is delivered and mixed with a hushed, hazy, dampened mid-range, and at some points kind of sounding like distant whispers resonating in the environment of the track. And then when Athena's harmonies come in to expand upon Moogie's organic sound, they are bright and synthetic, cutting right through the deep ambience that the song provides. And her verse furthers this sound with the pitch correction swiftly changing direction for every individual note. And honestly, I, I think it's a really cool dynamic. For a while, I've, if, 
if done tastefully. Really enjoyed the combination of organic sounds and processed and digital vocals. Uh, it produces a unique sound that I really think could be improved upon and built upon uh, should more people give their attention to it, and I think it'd be really something interesting. And then we have Fake by Kanashi. Fake is the most recent installment in Kanashi's gradual release of their DMB project Lonely Nights, and Fake addresses, well, fakeness. Kanashi is airing out some grievances with the people that they find themselves surrounded by at a seemingly constant rate, uh, and all of this anger is delivered cleanly with an insane level of clarity in the vocals over a buzzing and wavy DMB beat, and uh, of course given the genre we've got some really fun and intense drum patterns under everything, cutting through the otherwise mellow and low tone track. Kanashi's vocals on this are smooth and graceful with not much layering or background work done to leave the track to one straightforward good just one good vocal track for most of the time but when harmonies and layers are done they are done with some really cool format shifting and mixing and their lack of presence in most of the track makes the occasional appearance of them a bit of a treat in a way and as kanashi questions the fundamental morality of people's actions and self-presentation i'm kind of just in awe going back kind of just in awe, in awe at how clean it is i know i keep using these words like clean clarity and smooth but this song is just legitimately so nice to listen to and then we have mercy kill with eterna forest two years ago mercy kill released a song called wait on me and about one year ago mercy released a song called decisions with a devil why do i bring these tracks up Good question, my dear viewer, because they fall under a sound and style that Mercy Kill does not typically adhere to, but I love when he does. These songs are roomy and deeply emotional, over warm and cathedral roomy guitar, Mercy Kill croons and shouts some incredibly poignant lyrics, and on Eterna Forest, we see a return to this sound. And I think that Mercy's trademark distortion and scream rap can kind of make us forget that he really can make some compelling moody bangers with a focus on singing and melodic rapping, because the chorus on Eterna Forest is catchy as hell, scratching a, a very specific itch that I wasn't even really sure that I had. <laughs> The vocals and production sound like they were recorded in an underground cave. There is so much space that gradually folds over itself into infinity. It is a crazy sound. And in this soundscape, Mercy shows some emotional vulnerability, deviating away from the punchy drums and distorted high-end screaming to just let some shit out. And to me, there's something about all of this that I just love so much. It feels so reminiscent of like 2018 SoundCloud in the best way possible. It doesn't sound dated in that regard, it just captures a specific emotion and vibe that I don't see many people properly replicating these days. If we get one Mercy song a year, uh, that sounds like this, I would be satisfied because I know that Eterna Forest will be in my rotation for quite a long time. I'm incredibly impressed and the combination of nostalgia, emotion, vocal delivery, and production puts this on the list of my favorite drops of this year. And then we have Screwed, who has been a frequent flyer on the channel recently with a run of songs the past couple weeks that I've really enjoyed quite a bit, uh, with Psychopath specifically being a recent favorite of mine. And on I Hate Myself, Screwed continues to expand upon uh, his self-given label of Power Ranger rap. Uh, rapid Fire flows with an insanely processed and almost robotic vocal mix, shoot out creative and intelligent bars like they're coming from a cannon. And the one-off mixing choices and quirks in this track uh, make it so much better. The Operation Overdrive line specifically is always just a lot of fun to hear. And living in the flows, flow switches, and layers that roll over each other are some pretty wild bars as well. I feel like a spy kid the way I fucked up a sore ass thumb and live in the lost galaxy astro mega suicide are two bars that I will not be forgetting anytime soon. And everything is delivered with an unmatched level of intensity and confidence, with every line sounding so convicted that you can't help but be sucked into the themes and emotions of the track. This is just another one of the songs that appear on the weekly tracks list that I just gotta a recommend you go listen to without too much talking. It is a trip from start to finish. 
And to end things out, we have Hero Sun with June. This is our summer song of the week with a bouncy and twinkly song combining organic melodies and persistently layered vocals. The electric keys, bells, and horns create such a fun and engaging environment. It is bright and uplifting. I love it. However, this is music we're talking about. A happy and light-hearted instrumental does not mean a happy song. No, 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 no. We've seen it before. Hey Ya by Outkast, Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, June by Hero Sun. The lyrics go over the common grievances of young life, grades, relationships, growing older, feeling aimless, and in this search for purpose, Hero Sun really does provide a, a pretty big and fun sound. It's a nice balance where the contrasting elements don't really detract anything from each other. Uh, they actually just work together in tandem really well to create uh, a fun and uplifting sounding song. Uh, but when you listen to the lyrics and dive deeper into it, uh, there's emotional appeal. There's there's understanding and reflection. You're get, you're, what, what more could you want? That's going to do it for this week's weekly track list. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. If you listen to these songs, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on them. I I, I want to know. I mean, I liked them, but I have no I have no idea what you think. And that's that's the beauty of the internet, right? People that I've never met, never seen, never known, they can tell me I'm wrong. And you you that that's something you just you can't. That's something you can't put a price on. Catch me in the next video where everything I say is in a code that I have created and it is up to you, the viewer, to figure it out. Bye.